Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today we're going to talk about something more sus than a character from Among Us. Yes, I actually said that line. That's because me and Gamer from Mars have a little bet going on, I'll be honest here. But ladies and gentlemen, beyond all of the fun stuff in the background, I wanted to talk about our good old YouTube buddy, Logan Paul. Now, why am I talking about Logan Paul? To be honest with you, Logan doesn't come into my radar until big money gets in. As you all know, some of the most popular content that I've made in the last, you know, month, the last year, has been stuff covering scams, whether they be crypto, whether whether they be video game related, Pokemon cards are no exception. Now, when it comes to investing money, trading cards are big business. If you buy baseball cards, if you buy hockey cards, if you buy sports cards in general, or Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards, there are big markets. We all know that there's plenty of YouTubers on the internet right now, like Max Mofo and Leon Hart, that have built entire YouTube careers, juggernauts of careers, literally by opening cards and pulling cards and showing some of the rarest pulls that they've ever had. And it's truly adrenaline pumping shit. If you're ever actually into cards, watching somebody rip out a legendary and mistreat it is possibly one of the most painful but exhilarating experiences out there. Now, Logan Paul, our good old friend, is one of the Pokemon aficionados, and this isn't his first time on the rodeo. Logan Paul's been into Pokemon cards for a bit of the... Logan Paul likes Pokemon. He likes Pokemon cards, let's not kid around. And he spends some big money. I want to think that Logan Paul is one of the first YouTube influencers to actually make Pokemon cards like a big, big investment. Because of Logan Paul and just generally the popularity of Pokemon through things like Pokemon Go back in 2016, that absolutely shot it to the casuals out there, okay? Pokemon became the super mainstream thing, more mainstream than it already was. And if we look into the actual value of Pokemon cards, the price has blown up in some cases by nearly 500%. That's no joke. There are literally retailers that have actually claimed that they've shipped over 16.2 million single Pokemon cards to players in local hobby shops over just 2020. Yes, the pandemic year. In literally that same period, apparently the top collectible cards were literally priced over $50 in value. It rose 466%. That's just from TCG Player. Now, why am I coming at you with all these pokey facts? Well, that's because Logan Paul did a pokey fuck up. So the story begins in December 20th, 2021, a year ago, where Logan says, just drop 3.5 million dollars on this sealed and authenticated box of first edition Pokemon cards. Now, when I first looked at this image, I immediately questioned 3.5 million. That's a lot of goddamn money to be putting into cardboard. But remember, some people like Logan Paul do in fact have 3.5 million sitting around. I will say, regardless of how rich you are, I think 3.5 milli is still 3.5 milli, okay? I, if you get scammed out of 3.5 million dollars, man, do I kind of feel bad for you. But usually when I buy something for $3.5 million, which isn't actually really that often, in fact, not really ever, uh... I'm gonna do my due diligence. I'm gonna make sure that box is as real as everything. I'm gonna make sure that box is realer than the love my parents have for me, okay? That's just what I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that shit through x-rays. I'm gonna get the finest minds to come there before I even hand over a dime. So when I saw Logan Paul hold this box up here, which apparently was from the Baseball Card Exchange Incorporated, which is actually a pretty big company in all of this. If this is fake, that company is putting their reputation on the line and Logan Paul is holding this literally over a pool. If that thing falls over, that's 3.5 milli gone a tits up, okay? It is what it is. Now for full context, all right, let's go look into the history of the actual authentication firm that Logan Paul was using, which was the Baseball Card Exchange, all right? One quick cursory glance of their website will show you that, yes, they are in fact all about baseball. They're about basketball, football, hockey, other sports, non-sports, Non-sports? Well, let's look at what non-sports it's all about. Now, to understand, before we jump into this, all right, this site, as far as I know, really doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, rapport, authenticating Pokemon cards, really think anything non-sports related. So, when they were called in, it was one of those things where I was kind of questioning, like, huh? Really? We're going to go to these guys? In fact, if you look at their actual website, you can see that they don't really deal in, like, actual boxes. They actually deal more so in, like, foil packs for, like, first edition cards. So, you can see right over here, they're looking at, uh, you know, Pokemon base foil pack, German first edition Charizard, PSA graded 9. That's for $595. Yes, that is 
per foil pack, actually. These are like high-end foil packs that they're selling for $595. Now, the thing about these, like, sort of authentication firms is that they typically take the burden of authenticating if something is legit, if, like, an unopened item is legit. Because remember, when it comes to card scams, you typically have an issue where at any point in that card's lifespan, from all the owners that it's had, it could typically be impacted. It could be modified, it could be, like, opened up filled with random shit, reprinted, resealed, and then sold back. And if you can't identify who in the chain did that, that becomes an actual issue. Now, of course, one of the actual like problems with this was this is such a high profile purchase that typically when a company like this puts in the effort to like be on the paper, be authenticating. In fact, Logan Paul himself admitted that BBCE, the same company, was the one that actually ensured its authenticity. Now, of course, we all know this turns out to be complete bullshit simply due to the fact that he had G.I. Joe cards unpacked if you had watched his video. So now to understand Logan's $3.5 million Pokemon box, while it might be great content for him, if a company has put like decades of their history, okay, into this, decades of their like brand into this, they've almost destroyed that overnight. Nobody will take these guys seriously because the problem with authenticity is that while it's a very niche business, if you fuck up once, especially this bad, people are going to question every single thing that you do. They won't want to work with you anymore. And what was weird about it is when they insured the Pokemon cards, okay, it wasn't like they wrote up some technical forensic analysis. This is one from CGCComics.com where they actually did like a full certifying like Pokemon cards, okay? Like here you can see that they were looking at their grades. And in fact, if you look through this, it's a very incredibly comprehensive showcase on everything within the box, not just the Pokemon cards. Literally everything was analyzed to a nanometer to make sure this was legitimate or not. You can even literally see that on the backs of these cards, they were looking at like, they, they, were, they were looking at it so close to identify any discrepancy that they could find, even in this Blastoise over here and down to everything. This is the kind of stuff that when you're authenticating, this is what you pay these companies to do anyways, okay? They're able to discern every tiny detail. There are channels like Alpha Investments, Alpha Trading, uh, I believe it's Alpha Investments on YouTube, a channel that I watched here and there, specifically for Magic the Gathering stuff, where they were showcasing like fake card packs. And to somebody like me, who doesn't necessarily throw his money into this stuff or invest, it's interesting content because he shows you the absolute tiny things that you need to find, the tests you need to perform to validate even some shred of authenticity, which is a big deal when you're covering things like this. Now, when we looked into the actual situation, there were great write-ups by individuals who looked into like the original sellers for these boxes. For instance, this is the actual eBay archive of uh, what was the box that Logan had gotten. So this is a little bit weird. It's a little sussy-wussy. This is back from like March 29, 2021. So you guys can see right over here that we've got 901 5932. In fact, if we look at the actual serial code, which is WOC 060331E, in fact, WOC 060331E, that was tried back right to the seller. So this is the OG seller. And back then, the winning bid was 91,000 Canadians, around 72 grand uh, American, right? And of course, the more we go down into it, it actually was shipping, I believe, from Alberta, Canada, right over here. So, yeah, they <laughs> investigators traced that box back to its original seller, or at least one of the original sellers, right? Someone in the actual chain. So now if we look inside over here, let's look through their eBay listing real quick. Up for auction is an extremely rare and hard-to-find factory-sealed case of Pokemon base set, first edition containing six booster boxes. An item is an absolute must-have for any collector. Collection, don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to add this beautiful piece of history and highly valuable asset to your collection. Kind of sounds like somebody's hyping this up, like, ah, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We'll soon find out these things may not necessarily be as rare as, you know, some of these eBay listings put on. However, what's rather interesting are the origin stories. Now, like any good superhero, we all have like the origin stories like, ah, this is this is where I came from. The, the, like when, when Peter Parker got bit by a spider, okay, the story changes like no tomorrow. So we're going to read through two different stories. The first one we've got from this account, again, provided none of this is ever faked is uh, last year, this is their origin story. I was very bored, so I went over to my sister's to see what she was up to. She was not up to much, so we went for a drive to go get coffee. After we picked up coffee, she wanted to check out some estate sales, so we drove around looking at a few, not really my thing. 
But I was bored, so around the third estate sale, she took me to I was so bored I wanted to jump off a bridge. So as I was waiting for my sister, I was standing by a table having a smoke. When I went to put my smoke out on the bottom of my boot, I seen a box with loose trading cards containing Pokemon, hockey, baseball, etc. I started looking and seen a few I liked. Then I seen the case with all its paperwork next to the box. I was looking in... Right away, I picked it up, asked the lady if it was for sale. She said, yes, it was her grandson's, the man that passed away, and it was part of the estate sale. Now you know the story about the case. Ple what the fuck is that story? Are you... Are What? <laughs> How can you believe it? The man didn't believe in punctuation. Now, if you thought that was one story, I've got much. I've got a much more brief one for you. This is the other one from the same account. Provided again, none of these DMs have been faked. Is uh, it was a gift for my twelfth birthday in 1999, and I only got a few single Pokemon cards left and my hockey cards. Yeah, it's incredibly sussy wussy. No joke. No joke about that. Very sussy wussy stuff indeed. Now, to understand, a few days after Logan had bought this, on January 5th during a live stream, he found out maybe this might not be the only box in the entire world. To which Logan actually had a call with some actual pretty prominent card collectors by the name of Pokey Jew. Yes, that's actually the real collector. And King Pokemon, also known as Gary. Has. 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 I keep. I, people keep messing up my name, and I'm sorry, Has, if I messed up your name. And they discussed the first edition base set box over here. So let's listen to this one. This is from a live stream, boys. If 100% of the people thought that it was legit, still, I think it's better. You know, I have a case, like you know, and I half cracked it. I just opened up half wait, of the wait. box. Uh-oh, you see that face on Logan right there? That's the face of, I just made a pokey fuck up. See, he actually thought he was the only player in town with that case until this guy just casually said, you know, I have some, I crack them open all the time. Wait, 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 I didn't know that. Well, you know I have nine boxes. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah, oh, well, six, six of, them are of those in a are in a case? Yep. Yeah, you didn't know that? Gary, Gary, what? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> I th you know, people have always questioned if this is sussy and fake, and while initially I jumped in and wondered, who actually dumps $3.5 million into a case? That's one of those genuine faces where I think he actually knows that he made a mistake right there. So to understand, let's recap the whole Pokemon, like, scam going on. The whole card scam that happens. So this is actually a general trading card scam, but to understand what's going on, we actually looked at this a while back with one of the experts Logan Paul aligned himself with. This expert showed up on a YouTube channel known as Dumb Money, where they kind of like covered a case unboxing. But generally the idea goes like this. Somebody way back in the day when these cases first came out buys a case and uh, you know, they may take all the valuable cards out of the case and then stuff them back in, reseal it with fake cards or valueless cards. Now, once it's all resealed and repacked, the person who initially bought that and is now running the scam takes that and sells that case that they may have bought for, let's say a thousand dollars to another person and they buy it for $5,000. So the second person never opens the box because the general idea is they wanna hold onto that box, wait like 10 years for it to be worth a substantial amount of money to sell because the value of these cards really comes from rarity. See, if there's like a thousand rare Charizards, Eventually, after 15 years, there's probably going to be like, what, 100 Charizards that are in perfect, mint, untouched, virgin condition. So basically, if the person who buys that box believes that they have like 10 of those rare Charizards sitting in that box, just as an example, they can then sell it to the third buyer for like $100,000. Then the third buyer probably will never crack the box open. They wait a few more years and sell it to person four for a million dollars. And then person five jumps into the mix, which is our good friend Logan Paul, who buys it for $3.5 million. Except Logan here isn't in the market to sell that box for $5 million. Logan wants to crack that bitch wide open. So at this point, this becomes a big dilemma. Logan doesn't know if the box is fake. He might have his suspicions, but until he actually cracks it open, he won't know. In fact, you can't even blame anybody in the chain because nobody has any idea 
when that box was initially tampered and resealed. Chances are the first person could have bought the box, sold it legitimately, and maybe person three in the entire chain might have cracked open the box, did all the shady shenanigans, and sold it to person four, and then Logan Paul. That's how the card scam market works, and because of the popularity of Pokemon cards and various trading cards in general, there are tons of scumbags waiting to make this happen. So at this point, Logan Paul finally ends up getting this box, and people have a little bit of suspicions. Is it fake? Is it out there? And I had my suspicions too. Well, turns out, I, I, turns out I'm like Nostra fucking Domus, like the entire internet. It was a fake box. In fact, not only was it a fake, it is such a fake that Logan didn't even get Pokemon cards out of it. In fact, he got some goddamn G.I. Joe cards. Don't believe me? Let's watch what YouTube is trending at number one right now. So yeah, we're in Chicago. You see the title of the video. Uh, this story is f***ing crazy, and it sucks. And I'm out three and a half million dollars, so make sure to go get some G Fuel. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I'll buy some G Fuel, Logan. Goddamn. Code Sock, by the way. Hell yeah. Thanks, brother. Logan Paul may have spent the 3.5 million on fake Pokemon cards. This news has now reached Logan Paul. Dude, he's coming out of a private jet just to get this stuff verified. This man is a living goddamn meme, dude, ever since Japan. Jesus Christ. So basically, the general story is this guy sells the box to good old Logan. Now, this guy bought the box at $2.7 million, then sold it to Logan. I have no reason to believe a man like this would put their name out and actually do fake shenanigans. Again, there's a lot of reputations on the line. Somebody could be going to jail for Pokemon card fraud, I shit you not. So again, if somebody wants to risk their actual reputation... I'm gonna have to call Sussy Wussy on that one, but let's go watch it further. Outside of the case. Quick context, this is Matt. He's one of the biggest sports card collectors in the world. He bought the Pokemon case for 2.7 million. He then sold it to me for 3.5 million, but he's become a close friend. And I could trust that he'd refund me if things went wrong. If we crack open that case tonight and inside are just a bunch of what do you do? Well, we know it's not because we went through a uh, security check okay. in Philly. Okay. We just happened to go in a government building. <laughs> we know it's not yeah, yeah, we know it's not <laughs> the reason why I was mostly concerned was because the person who brought it to me, he had so many inconsistencies, so much inconsistencies in the stories. So uh, here we got the uh, here we got the guy admitting that the person who brought the whole thing to him had some inconsistencies in the story. To understand, Logan will get his money back, the three point five million apparently from this individual. They're gonna have to do all the legal sussy wussy nonsense, but again. Logan doesn't seem to be financially impacted, maybe from the entire scenario, maybe he ends up getting his money back. I don't necessarily know. All I know is he wants you to buy whatever energy drink product he's shilling out so he can get the money back, I guess. I don't, it's a cop. It, so, it sounds like, it sounds like paid, paid, paid promotion to me. That, that's all it is. It's, it's very, it's very sussy. And on another note, look, if you just look at this history, like the, the history of this actual box we looked at just like not even 10 minutes ago, everyone can identify that the origin stories and the shadiness around this box is like paramount. Why would an expert in sports cards or really any cards decide to throw money down on something that they already have themselves found red flags in and the community took like five picoseconds to identify the red flags? It just does not make any goddamn sense. I don't know why, unless you were doing this for content and you just got all these organizations involved just so they can put their own reps on the line while you yourself get to walk away scot-free nearly, financially at least, and also, it just, none of it makes any sense, okay? None of it does. This is why people are calling a bit of shenanigan action on this. The guys from BBCE who authenticated it are here to basically stamp their authentication. If this is fake, we're, in, we're all in trouble because it looks so good. There's first edition packs in there, we're, we're gold. The case value of this is gonna double, triple. It, it would legitimately be verifiably 100% the only sealed case in the world that is 100% real. You're from BBC. Yeah, I'm the owner. Yep. You're the owner of BBC yep. and you authenticated this. Yes, me and Michael are gonna go over when it came to my office that day, what I looked for. So immediately, this guy was the one who authenticated. Now, this is the CEO, the owner of BBCE, one of the reputable, like, you know, authenticators in this entire, like, field. Again, he authenticated it, and now that he's been put onto the spotlight, you can see that this man is about to go full sus, okay? This man is about to, like, this man is questioning the existence, okay? This man is questioning God at the moment. Let's see, let's see, let's see how this turns out. Back in March of this year, this case came into my office. They asked for my opinion. 
if the outside of this case had been tampered with, played with, reproduced in any way. You can see in this is aged onto this case. This label too, the same embedded lines of the cardboard from age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are in that label. There's no evidence of tampering. One edge would look different. In any way, shape, yep. or form. I did my diligence just like I do for a sports case. So yeah, what's really kind of weird, and again, I'm not even like an investigator in these cards myself, but I can tell you right now, if like these are the flags you're going for to identify, like even if this is a real thing, who's to say nobody could have slapped on tape right there, maybe mixed in a little dirt between the two right after it was reprinted, rolled it around and gotten those same sort of track marks on this entire situation. Like there are so many things that one could fake in on this box. And while they're saying one side was different, one side isn't, I, I have to imagine this had to have been more comprehensive than what this person is giving their professional opinion on. There's probably like 19, 20, 200, 200,000 different identifying markers on these boxes. Remember, you can't crack these things open at all until like the day of, all right? Like you can't crack, these are unopened luxury goods. These are unopened assets. And at the end of the day, all right, if these are like the identifying marks, the identifiers, then I could already imagine them easily being faked. Again, I could easily be wrong on this, but again, if these like, if these fakeries are coming to my head, I could only imagine what actual card scammers probably can come up with, okay? This is like, they put more effort into this than counterfeiting like straight up cash. This one say first edition on it. Oh no. That, yeah. Oh no. Some of them don't even say first edition. It's not even the right box art. All right, open it up. Now, this is the moment of truth. They're going to open it up and see what it has. And ladies and gentlemen, oh lo and behold, God. fucking G.I. Joe cards. Woo! <laughs> Damn, son. Somebody got scammed hard. Now, there's been assessments that this might have been completely fake, but if you go over here, you can see that there's Instagram accounts like Mealy Pops, which seems to be a pretty reputable sender anyways. 2021, Logan Paul times Shine times Shop Mealy Pops times Jacob. Back in April, when I got a phone call from Jacob telling me he locates an authentic first edition case in Canada, woo, I knew it was going to be special. I was overjoyed that I could be part of the Pokemon hobby history and bringing it to the U.S., shouting out FedEx and Baseball Card Exchange, and then leading the charge to get it authenticated and preserved through BBT Exchange, wrapping the case. All that had to be done was next to find the right buyer. What a privilege in bringing to my guy Shine to make history, now selling it for a record 3.5 million. If you don't think this inflates the card market more than it has to be, you're dead wrong. The more celebrities get into this, the more wilder it's going to be. It's kind of like the crypto and NFT market where like right now, the speculative value bumps up even higher because literally everyone and their mom wants to peddle its value beyond the roof. However, in Pokemon cards, I think there's actually, you know, proper rarity. You can't just control F a million dollar Charizard, nor should I think you should buy a million dollar Charizard. Seems like a weird investment. Don't know how high that's going to go. But here you can see this guy gets this Pokemon box. Then it goes to this shine guy. The shine guy then gives it to our buddy Logan. And our buddy Logan holds it over a pool. Very, very not okay. But if you ever really look into it, because of how bad press this is starting to get, the comments have basically seemed to all been disabled. Like, I literally cannot comment on this entire... I can send it. I may even be able to like it, but I definitely cannot comment on this entire thing. And yes, the comments have in fact seemed to have been removed. Now, to understand, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tie this whole thing off. Now, this video started off, I had, I had an entire extra for it, but I'm kind of re-recording it over here because, frankly, when you do a bit more research onto a situation, things do change. Now, do you think I did 30 years of research into finding out how shady this one box was? No, I, I probably did somewhere on the lines of maybe like 30 minutes to an hour, and that's the time, including playing some Halo Infinite and uh, scratching my belly button. That's pretty much what I had to do in this entire situation. Now, if you think I did the research, tons of people in the Pokemon card market did it. This is a market that's so highly inflated because of not just Logan Paul, but obviously the various popularity of Pokemon and trading cards in general. For a lot of people, this is an investment. This is a collection that they hope appreciates 30 years from now. But the reality is in the terms of cards, there's a lot of scams that are around unopened, you know, assets, especially in cards like this. So there's obviously a wary amount of trust. 
Now, when you've got all these experts, you know, putting their reputation, like the BBCE, Logan Paul's like expert friend, sports card and, and, and you know, investor. And it turns out, yeah, the box is full of G.I. Joes and the identifiers that they're using typically, at least to me, like dirt tracks on the on the tape or, or in the ends of the box, which could very easily be faked at some point. Like unless you carbon date the goddamn materials or throw it through x-rays, maybe I don't think uh, I don't think you'll ever get like a true proper legitimate like you know stamp on something but hey reputations were ruined okay people put their balls on the line and logan paul while it seems in this video he seems to be getting a refund or he'll probably end up getting his money back the reality of will the original scammer that we saw in that ebay listing or you know whoever's in the chain will they ever be tried and processed under the just uh, un under the legal system maybe when this much money is involved. But then again, I'm not holding my breath too hard. People scam out others out of millions every day. We've seen it in the crypto market all the time. And uh, nothing really tends to happen there. Like, you know, the SEC, FBI, all these agencies, you know, take a decade to actually get things through. So maybe something will happen, maybe something won't. But I think ultimately the story was rather interesting, okay? Obviously we knew from the start this probably was just a giant content farm. But uh, it's interesting to see, like, this is the one box where obviously there's a lot of stagey sussiness going on. But with so many people who have decades of experience in a field putting all their experience on, like, balls on the line, it makes you wonder just how legitimate this whole nonsense really is. That said, though, this is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.